In hockey, there are two ways you can shoot, left and right. Left being with your left hand as the low hand, and right being with your right hand as the low hand. When you first pick up a stick, one way will almost always just feel more comfortable than the other, like swinging a baseball bat or a golf club. It is of course rare to be left-handed in general, and it's rare to play hockey in general, so finding both must be rare, which means the vast majority of people who shoot left have their dominant right hand on the top of the stick, and the vast majority of people who shoot right have their dominant right hand on the bottom of the stick. It's something that might seem subtle or even irrelevant, but I've always had an eye for which way a player shoots. I could tell you which way every player in the NHL shoots who has played at least, I'll say, 20 games in the league with probably 99% accuracy. I just can't unsee the way a player shoots. It probably started as a kid watching the Mighty Ducks, the stunt people and actors who could skate would constantly flip-flop between which way they held their sticks and it just drove me nuts. Ever since, having played and watched as much hockey as I have, I've always wondered something. Does the way you shoot actually affect the way you play hockey? Another wrong curve and he's using it. Rebound Ryan, scores with Koivu's stick. He picked up Koivu's stick and he scored with it. I can't believe it. It's said that hockey players used to switch which way they held their sticks more often while stick blades were straight. We've all heard some old guy tell us a story that some other old guy's dead grandfather's barber told his friend about, and it was always about so-and-so who could play just as well with both hands back in the 1940s or whatever. Gordy Howe is always the go-to. Big, rugged, and fast. Howe is ambidextrous, but packs a little more power in a right-hand shot. But out of all the Gordy Howe photos on the internet, I've only seen a few of him holding a stick what looks like it could be left while playing, and it's tough to see exactly what he's doing in a couple of those. I wish there was some footage of it in action, but as far as I know, there isn't, other than this little clip where he taps Johnny Bauer's pads. So we don't really know how common an occurrence this was, nor how effective it would have been. There's a handful of players from back in the day who could apparently switch shoot as well, and while certain stories are, I'll say, more believable than others, we don't really know anything for sure. All we really have are the retconned anecdotes that pretty much sound like fables at this point. But we do know that ever since Stan Makita and Bobby Hull curved their blades, obviously making it much easier to shoot the puck with force and accuracy, and subsequently began dominating the league, everyone started doing it. And so, setting aside a few years for that to fully catch on, since about the mid-1960s, 1970s, if you played hockey, you played with a curved stick, and you shot one of two ways, left or right. The shot amplifying curve pretty much solidifying that it would never be practical to fully switch hands in a competitive hockey game. Here's Nick Ehlers switching hands in a competitive hockey game. Engaged with a couple of bumps to start the game. Look at this move. I mean, between the legs, one hand. That's unbelievable. An incredibly slick display we've never seen again anywhere else in a high level game. So yeah, it's pretty much a one-off and we've once again established that you shoot one of two ways. And the way you shoot can determine where you feel more comfortable on the ice or where someone else finds you more useful. Everybody loves one-time options on the power play, but as far as normal, everyday, five-on-five five goes, wingers these days are becoming a little more interchangeable as far as which way they shoot. The right shot might like either side better and vice versa. Sagan, right shot, left side, zing. Almost like a power play, bang, Kucherov. It doesn't have too much more relevance if you're playing center other than for some face-offs. Typically, it's easier to win it on the backhand, and if you're in your own end, you'd rather put it towards the corner than at your own goalie, so get someone on their backhand in there. Unless they are good enough on their forehand and that's the best option you have. In rare cases, a player will even switch which way they shoot to take the face off on the backhand. However, on defense, the way you shoot is pretty much always the side you play. Having most of the ice easily available to your forehand is ideal when people are skating their hardest to try and smash you on the forecheck, so especially with the speed of today's game, it's rare to see a defenseman play on their offside. Let's talk goalies. Like a baseball glove, as a hockey goalie, you would almost always catch with your offhand. Therefore, holding a goalie stick with your dominant left hand is what determines how strikingly noticeable a goalie who shoots or catches right is. Why? Again, it's rare to be left-handed, it's rare to play hockey, and it's much rarer to play professional hockey, but rarer yet to do it all as a goalie. So yeah, you do not see a lot of goalies who wear the glove on their right hand, or shoot right. And since it somehow doesn't seem to make much of a difference, and that it's so rare, most of what are considered the best goalies will catch with their left hand. Out of 90 goalies who played at least one regular season game in the 2022-23 NHL season, six shot right. Karel Vamelka, Cal Peterson, Logan Thompson, Charlie Lindgren, Michael Hutchinson, 
in Palo Francois. So if it's that rare, is that an advantage? If you do catch right as a goalie, it looks very different as a person watching, but especially as a person playing. You're not used to the space in the net being occupied by different things, but open in others. And like I said, six out of 90. How often then do most players even practice on a goalie whose blocker is on the left and glove on the right? Shouldn't that be an advantage for goalies who shoot right? Well, there aren't any alarming statistical differences based on unfamiliarity of facing a goalie who catches right. However, there also hasn't been enough Thomas Vokuns to have a relevant survey. And unfamiliarity itself isn't necessarily a recipe for success. Otherwise, I'm sure a lot of goalies would do some weird things. Say you really wanted to throw shooters off, Bill Durnan was ambidextrous and had these custom mitt things made so that he could actually swap during play. So, can't say for sure, but that actually might have been effective. However, that's an anomaly. But again, we just haven't seen enough right-handed goalies to say for sure that the way they caught was responsible for any advantage or not. And given how rare it is to begin with, 6 out of 90 might not even seem that shocking. So for now, we can leave it at which way you shoot or catch as a goalie, there isn't much difference. If you catch right, it might be easier for you to play the puck or stop a dump in on the right, and vice versa if you catch left. Though I guess Dwayne Rolison could do that quick switch and scoop high backhand passes, but obviously a right shooting goalie could at least attempt the same thing. This whole thing is really more about skaters, and in that case, how about as an individual? On your own, is there any tangible difference between shooting left and right? Playing hockey as a kid is where I really noticed that there was a genuine difference between the two, and if you've played, you'll definitely know what I'm talking about here. I remember watching people who shot right do that one-hand puck protection thing with their low hand, which was their dominant hand, and I, as a left shot, could not release my dominant hand on top and carry the puck confidently with my weak hand on the bottom, well enough to attempt in a game at least. Which is what Gordie Howe looked to be doing in a couple of those photos from earlier. Jack Eichel will do it from time to time if you want to see it in action, and that's something you almost never see a left shot do at any level, because most people aren't left-handed. The only time I've seen it attempted in a moderately competitive setting is when Martin St. Louis did it in one of those relay things, and this video encapsulates my point well at the same time, being that the one and only time he knocks over a cone is when he does that low hand thing and has to bring his dominant hand back. And I'll add that I think it's probably more advantageous to be able to protect the puck with your top hand, which for most left-handed shooters will be their dominant right hand. So already, there is a difference. But here's where things start to get more interesting. Right shooting defensemen have been more coveted for quite some time now, and I might finally have the answer as to why. Think about this. Do they seem on average to have more of an offensive game? Tough to say, there's lots of defensemen who shoot left with good offensive capabilities. However, while I'm sure you'd somewhat get used to it, I cannot imagine playing defense with my non-dominant hand on the top of the stick. One-handed play would feel so much harder, making defensive play, which is often done with one hand on the stick, a seemingly more daunting task. Wouldn't it be easier to poke check with your dominant hand? The center, he turns on the Jets. What a play by Pellick. Perhaps the NHL's best defensive defenseman, Jacob Slavin, agrees. So at the highest level, do the best defensive defensemen more often shoot left? Perhaps in some capacity, but what's easier to see is that almost everyone who is first and foremost an offensive defenseman shoots right. So it seems like we've finally cracked the mysterious case of why right shooting defensemen have become so coveted. Shooting right and having the ability to play NHL level defense is clearly more plausibly rare than we thought. Here's a bunch of NHL players who, based on some photos of them signing autographs, seem to be left-handed. Recognize anything? Every single one shoots right. And I can't seem to find a single left-handed player who also shoots left. Other than Tampa Bay Lightning goalie Andre Vasilevsky, which is really odd. That's a very small amount of right shooting players who have their dominant hand on the top of the stick. And I guess if you're on this list and play defense, you better be good at defensive play because you don't get to use the my non-dominant hand as my top hand excuse for your potential lack of defensive prowess. And again, there are lots of great offensive defensemen who shoot left as well, you just tend to think of them less as offense first all the time guys than almost all of those right shots. And of course you pretty much only see left handed shots attempt things like deliberate one handed chips. So slide this right through the five hole, lets that one hand poke, and Texier scores! And if you've never seen Nino Niederreiter go bar down with it, take a look at this. 
The only moderately controlled chip I've seen from a right hand shot was this one from Alex Ovechkin. And yeah, it looks borderline accidental, like he was trying to bring his other hand back but just couldn't and decided to shovel it in with the forehand. And Alex Ovechkin might actually be left handed, but I'm not 100% sure because the Soviet Union forced left handed kids to use their right hand instead as they could be more easily integrated into the army where guns and other military equipment were always built for right handed people. And this was something that's said to have lasted until around 1986, a year after Alex Ovechkin was born, so it's very plausible that it still could have been implemented during his youth in the late 80s. Nevertheless, a one-handed chip is just something you don't normally see from a player who shoots right, nor is this. Look at Forsberg, he's cut off by the goaltender. Look at that reach, one hand on the stick. It's most commonly known as the Forsberg, or the UC Jokinen. UC Jokinen! He does it! But for the record, Forsberg himself will tell you that it's actually the Kent Nielsen move. You beat it! So maybe we should start calling it that. You just saw 25 clips of left shots doing it. I've only seen this move done by a right shot once. Here's Rasmus Ristolainen. Cross the line on his backhand, a forehead backhand. Ristolainen is right-handed, by the way, so he's impressively doing that with his offhand. I'm basing this on some video of him signing autographs and this Flyers Animal Rescue one, where he's supporting this little Chihuahua's rump with his right hand. A dump dump shot. But yeah, the same applies for other weird one-handed moves I've seen in a competitive setting. You pretty much need your dominant hand on top, like this from Timu Hartikainen, or this from Nick Lindbergh. And apparently Peter Forsberg still got it. If you've never seen the Dustin Bufflin one hand slap shot, I mean, here it is. Something that'd be almost impossible for most left shooting players. Obviously not very practical, but it's pretty sweet. More interesting yet, you on average see quicker stick handling from left shooting players than right shooting players, specifically side to side east west stick handling. Just looks a little bit stiffer for most right handed players, regardless of how good they are. Mitch Marner and Jack Eichel are some quicker right hands that come to mind, who I'm sure are not left handed, and yet even with them, it's not quite the same lateral movement as some of the players you would consider prominent left shooting stick handlers. Potentially because your dominant hand is on top and you roll your wrist so much stick handling, so you just have a different sort of dexterity with your dominant hand. And there is something different about the way Artemi Panarin, who is left-handed and shoots right, stick handles the puck compared to most right shooters. Whereas Nathan McKinnon is pretty much an anomaly as far as right-handed, right shooting, stick handling speed goes. And finally, let's talk about shooting. At the highest level, left shooting players seem to have an advantage when it comes to getting power and accuracy on backhand play. This is in reference to plays where the backhand is actually used as a sort of wrist shot in reverse. And not the last move of a stick handling sequence that reverses the puck's momentum for a quick forehand backhand one touch shot thing. But even with moves like that, a left shot can generally pull it off from further away at a higher percentage. First step, dry sidle, steals, stick handling, backhander, what a beautiful goal, top shelf, that's Leon Dreisaitl. However, I've had a theory for some time now, and my hypothesis is, for the most part, that the best top of the line shooters in the NHL shoot right. Loads it up, scores! Number five for Taves Thompson! This doesn't apply to the increasingly rare slap shot, but it certainly does to the most commonly used snap and or wrist shot. If an NHL player is a prominent shooter, like an above average shooter, they are almost always a right-handed player who shoots right. Skeptical? I hear ya, I've been thinking about this for years. But take a look at this. The NHL recently made a video asking players who the best shooters in the league were, so I thought it'd be interesting to see if their opinions matched my eye test. Every player mentioned in the video other than one shot right which gave me the green light to finally voice this theory with the best subjective opinions, the league's best players, as my proof. When a wrist or snapshot, particularly its release and power more than its sheer accuracy, is a player's top of the line talent, they almost always shoot right. And obviously while guys like David Posternock and Nathan McKinnon can do a lot more than just shoot, I'd say the shot is probably still their biggest weapon. So clearly all the highest of high end shooters shoot right. Right, case closed. Well, not quite. In that same video, there is an anomaly. The only player mentioned who shot left was Austin Matthews, and he was mentioned a lot. So why is Austin Matthews the anomaly? 
with a lot of right-handed shooters, you can see common dynamics. And with left-handed shooters, Leon Dreisaitl, Nikita Kucherov, Elias Pettersson, Evgeny Malkin, Mike Hoffman, Vladimir Tarasenko, and Frank Vertrano come to mind as some left shots who can really shoot it. But they all shoot it quite differently, and no left shots really shoot the puck quite like Matthews. He can shift his weight in all different directions, and it's the same result every time. Just a laser of a wrist shot. He gets ridiculous amounts of whip on the puck from anywhere, front foot, back foot, off the hip, front of the body, you can just fling the thing from anywhere. And being able to do that allows him to change the angle of the release point at the last millisecond while still getting power on the shot. And that's, that's the best I can do. If it was as easy as watching or someone telling you or even himself explaining how he does it, everyone would do it, and they can't. And for now, a left shot at that level is a one-of-a-kind skill that the league has never seen and may not see again for a while. It is indeed an anomaly. For the record, Matthews is right-handed, so having your dominant hand as the low hand clearly isn't a necessity in order to have a top-level wrist shot. You might be starting to think that the deck is stacked against right shooters, and you might be right. As of now, we've theorized that, on average, left-handed shooters can stick handle a little quicker, can effectively protect the puck with their top hand alone, and can obviously use their dominant hand more easily to poke check. While right shooters can do that low hand puck protection thing, and at the highest level, which means it doesn't affect the vast majority of players, some may have slightly better wrist shots. So as Austin Matthews and others are starting to close the gap in wrist shot skill for all the left shooters out there, is shooting left just an advantage? Weirdly enough, or because it fits what we've theorized so far exactly, there are far more left shots in the league year in, year out than right shots. In the 2022-2023 season, there were 951 skaters who played at least one NHL game, 358 who shot right, and 593 who shot left. Here's the crazy thing. Whether they know the reason or not, NHL scouts and GMs may actually like the average left shot skill set better. If you don't believe me, take a look at this. The 2023 first overall pick, Connor Bedard, shoots right. Bedard was the first right shooting player to be selected with the first overall pick since Aaron Ekblad in 2014, and both of them are two of only nine first overall picks who shot right since 1990, not including goalie Rick DiPietro. So that's only nine skaters over the past 34 drafts who were thought of as a top prospect. For a more broad outlook in the same time frame since 1990, only 25 right shooting players have been selected in the top three of the draft, where the other 77 have shot left over 75%. Is that relevant? Well, it might be tough to say, but a do-it-all offensive player is typically what you're expecting with a first overall pick, and I'll be damned if a left shot doesn't seem to have more of an inherent advantage in versatility. And when you see some of those skills develop early, stuff that NHL players can't do, yeah, it at least comes off pretty versatile, where the players who've been drafted first overall who are right shooters are almost always, you guessed it, ridiculously good shooters. Other than Rick DiPietro, obviously, and the two right shooting defensemen taken, McBlad and Johnson, here's who you've got. Connor Bedard, Nathan McKinnon, Steven Stamkos, Alex Ovechkin, Ilya Kovalchuk, Eric Lindros, and Owen Nolan. <laughs> Point made. And remember that the do-it-all anomalies are possible, while defensemen, one-timers, and good players in general who shoot right will always be not only coveted, but due to the scarcity could continue to be more desirable in certain situations. For instance, as of now, December 2023, seven out of the top 10 highest cap hits among defensemen shoot right, as do eight out of the top 10 highest salaries. But anyways, in the comments, I'd love to hear your opinions on some underrated wrist shots, and in general, who could be in the argument for the best wrist shot you've ever seen. For me, it's a certain Washington Capitals winger, first round pick, from Russia, who shoots right, and his first name is Alexander. Ovechkin has a step, Alex Ovechkin full sprint, nice pass, Semin, SCORE! Alexander Semin had one of, if not the nastiest wrist shot of all time. Overlap with Semin, fire, SCORE! This is the front of the net, Semin will shot, SCORE! Chance here to get it into this hockey game, another face up win, that's a goal, Semin shot that puck so hard, flat footed, you wouldn't believe it. For the record, I would love to see the All-Star Skills Competition incorporate a hardest wrist shot, maybe even backhand, amongst other things which I'll talk about in another video soon. Until then, excusing any anomalies, while the difference between shooting right and left is subtle, there is a difference. In saying that, remember that I am talking about thin margins while playing at the highest level. And who knows, will things even out with evolution? Or will the way you shoot always give you a slight edge in certain aspects of hockey?